injured here and I'm going to talk to you about some stuff. First up is the Elite Mod Championship Tournament coming this month, September 27th to the 28th. That's a weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And this is a mega tournament consisting of a group stage and bracket stage. That's a knockout stage for people con confused about that term. Featuring the best players from the previous MRTs, the MRT ladder and some qualifiers. So what is this thing? It's a brainchild of Erie, the guy who runs the monthly Wumble tournaments. He had the idea of putting together a massive tournament at the end of a season of MRTs with a crowdfunded prize pool. So that's what we're going to see. The top eight performing players, which are going to go straight into that bracket stage, which I assume is going to be the 28th. I assume they're going to do the group stage on the 27th and the knockout stage on the 28th. Well, I'm not entirely sure. So the top eight players to go straight into that knockout stage are Noisy, Dark Riku, Holy Hammer coming out of nowhere winning the last MRT without dropping a game he's in there we've got Redbeard, Twala Lee, Fear, Crazy Man 64335 and Fat E so those are the eight players going straight into the knockout stage for being such high performers in previous tournaments the next eight players who are going to go into the group stage are Ace of Swords, Kvek, Torpid, Hob San also known as Chaos Librarian I believe he has had to drop out though and should be replaced by Sertopi if he can make it. We've also got Soul Drinkers, Adila, Tex and 4-3 FSD. Not sure who that player is but he's done well. He's in there. He's given himself a chance. But there are another eight places up for grabs for the group stage. So what they're doing now is running these qualifying 1v1s. A bunch of players you can register and play 1v1s, try to accumulate points and get into that group stage. So we've got the likes of Floyd, We've got Soup Hooper, we've got uh, Wurgle, we've got Ben1993, a bunch of people trying to get in and that closes on September 14th I believe it is so by that time we'll know the 24 players who are in the tournament proper. Uh, the prize as you can see is an amazing 423 euro right now donated by various players and viewers and you can still donate if you visit a link in the description that I'm going to put for you and bolster that prize pool anymore. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to be distributed but I know it's, it's not going to all just be lumped on the winner it's going to be distributed throughout the the players who got to the knockout stage I believe but yeah awesome stuff. Coverage will hopefully come in the form of Red Rupee streaming as many games as he can. I'm not sure if he's just going to stream on the 28th or he's going to stream on the both days. He will most likely be joined by Codex, those guys do a great job covering the tournaments and we've got Crazy Man who is in the tournament of course and so we're going to see him streaming from his point of view which is really interesting to see in tournaments you might even see him pop up on the Saturday and stream some of the group stage games maybe if we're lucky so yeah visit the links and read all about this stuff donate if you can to the prize pool but make sure you tune in let's get a lot of, lot of coverage for this and show your support to all these players bringing you some entertainment so that's the elite more championship looking forward to it massive what is right. this a new official dawn of war website some kind of warp trickery no this is real so for those of you that don't know, Relic Entertainment are the guys who developed the Dawn of War series. All of the games, in fact, I think, apart from Dawn of War Soulstorm, which was developed by Iron Law, they also developed the critically acclaimed Company of Heroes series, which I don't play because it has a distinct lack of chainswords, and they also made the awesome Homeworld series. All of those things published under THQ. So back in around March 2012, Relic basically stopped supporting Dawn of War 2 Retribution which was the current game and still is the current Dawn of War 2 game because all or most or some of the Dawn of War 2 team were laid off by THQ in an effort to finish Company of Heroes 2 and stave off being bankrupt which didn't work. THQ did go bankrupt but luckily for us Relic Entertainment was snapped up by Sega and were able to release Company of Heroes 2 to broad acclaim I think and fast forward to 2014 end of August ish and Relic pop up with a beta patch for Dawn of War 2 and more specifically we're focusing on Dawn of War 2 Retribution which migrates the multiplayer over to their battle server system which is what Company of Heroes 2 uses and is generally better than the 
peer-to-peer -peer slash Steam system that we currently have. I'm not going to pretend to be any kind of expert, but basically instead of all of the players connecting to each other and relying on Steam, we have all of the players connecting to a battle server. So when one player lags, they do not lag the entire lobby anymore. They only lag themselves and then they kind of freeze and then they have to catch up to where the lobby is. You kind of fast forward, it's pretty weird. But uh, in practice, it's actually working pretty well, I'm impressed. Especially in terms of team games, which were often a lag fest, it's now a lot better. Lag messages are a thing of the past. Occasionally you'll get one player lagging, but it's usually their computer not being able to handle all the stuff going on or a little hitch with their connection. So on the whole, it's working pretty damn good. And they pushed out the final patch on September 6th I think it was. It's not all rosy though, it has mucked up a bunch of stuff. Firstly, lobbies are kind of screwing now. The the lobby chat doesn't work all that well as well as it did. You can't close channels easily and you sometimes double post your messages and stuff. And uh, you have to remake the lobby after every game which is a massive pain in the ass. The host actually has to restart their game or they can't invite anyone which is pretty bad. Fix it Relic. We also have, I haven't tried the ladder myself, but players who have tried playing on the new ladder system or leaderboards, whatever you want to call it, in ranked retail have reported trouble finding games and finding matches and the leaderboard being a, a bit weird, so there's issues there. Did they wipe it? I'm not sure if they wiped it. And the army ranking system seems to be a bit weird as well. You seem to have all your ranks reset, but in game they appear to not be or something. It's a bit odd. Nobody knows what's going on. What else is there? Oh yeah, OBS is observer mode, I should say, is kind of screwed up. There's no longer a referee mode, which is apparently a side effect of going to the battle server system. It doesn't support referees, which is a bit weird, but there you go. And OBS who I assume connect to the battle service as well to be able to observe seem to not connect as well as the players. You have massive frame drops and little hitches and stuttering. It's not the end of the world, it's watchable but in terms of players who want to stream games or something from the observer slot, i.e. tournaments, it might lead to a bit of a worse experience for the viewers and last but certainly not least for me anyway, the world builder is completely broken right now. It runs, but as soon as you try to load or create a map, it crashes. Which is not a problem for most players, but for those of us, for those of us who create maps, it's pretty damning and it's the end of that. I uh, don't think, yeah, I'm pretty sure Relic just released the world builder as is and let people have fun with it. I don't think they officially support it in any, in any way, so they probably didn't test it at all. We might never see it fixed. Maybe someone with a much bigger brain than me can work out how to fix it. I know they have in the past. But here we have it. We have a new website looking pretty cool. We even have a little team of developers and community people who are posting news and posting on the new forums we have. Here we go. And they're actually posting on it. So that's good to see. We, we even have Gorb, the old moderator from the old Dawn of War websites is now a moderator on this forum. It's like nothing has changed it, except that everything has. So what does this mean? Does this mean new content for Dawn of War 2? Nobody knows. We don't know. We might see maybe some cheeky DLC army schemes released because they know people will buy that stuff. And it seems to indicate, doesn't it, that Relic are committed to the Dawn of War license. And I don't think anyone knows for sure if Relic slash Sega still retain a license to make a Dawn of War 3 but we can only hope and it's a good step in the right direction. There is no sign incidentally of any kind of balance patch. We're still in terms of retail stuck with that old kind of broken state it's in with the crazy catechin devils and the bugged tyrant guard and heavy weapon squad that want to try and throw bolter shells at Hormagaunts instead of shoot them because they have no guns. So we're still stuck with that. It might be that Relic just want to migrate it to battle servers, make sure everything's working and then leave it. And then hopefully, maybe if we're lucky and we pray to enough Dark Gods, we'll get Dawn of War 3 at some point. But it might be them kicking up and 
starting to support Donald War 2 properly again with balance patches and all sorts of stuff. We just don't know right now. They did patch it again on September 9th with a very kind of short and rather cryptic update log which didn't seem to do anything at all. I'm not sure what that was about. It didn't seem to fix anything that I can see. So yeah, maybe exciting times. Relic, reawaken and start to care about Dawn of War again. And I think, to be honest, they always did. I don't think they wanted to stop supporting. It was THQ that shut it down, basically. But we're back. Ish.